It has recently occurred to me that we've gone quite some time without a catastrophic engine failure on this channel. And I'm not saying that the engines I've torn down lately haven't been bad. The Jaguar was cooked within an inch of its life. And then last week's N55, well, that wasn't good at all. But it wasn't catastrophic. There were no inspection ports on the outside, no malice in the combustion palace, and how long should I deprive you all of such glorious teardowns with bent rods, smashed pistons, and regapped spark plugs? Well, I'm hoping for all of those things today. Today we have a Toyota 2A RFE. It's out of a 2012 Scion TC. This is a 2.5 liter all aluminum four cylinder. They make between 170 and 180 horsepower depending on what application. These engines are also found in the Toyota Camry. It's very common 2010 and later and Toyota RAV4s. And I think these engines are used in different vehicles across the globe. Now, I don't hear anything bad about these ever. No one has ever asked me for one of these engines. In fact, finding a blown up one, well, I got lucky. Actually, I got really lucky because even though I do go out and look for these things, sometimes I just can't find them. But my friend Andy and his son brought this over to me. This was left in his buddy's shop. It was out of a relative's car and it was blown up and he knew that I would tear it down on this channel. So he brought it over to me, delivered for zero dollars. I Thank you. And you all owe Andy a big thank you too and his son because, well, we would be tearing down something else and it may not be as catastrophic. So let's figure out what happened here. The very first thing I noticed when I was looking at this engine, it's, it's very silver. And I'm not saying that aluminum engines aren't silver, but this is paint. And paint means that it's either been rebuilt or, you know, aerosol rebuilt. I mean, it could have been a rebuilt engine. Let's see what this heat tab says. It says, void if removed. That doesn't help us. Regardless, uh, this engine clearly has a jaded pass because rebuilt engines means that it failed at least once. And in this case, if you look down here, there's a little bitty place you can see inside the crankcase just to, just to check out the bearings just a little extra crankcase ventilation and you can see the paint's chipping off here now i don't know what you're supposed to do with a hole this small unless uh you know maybe they thought well since this is a late model engine that everybody would have a boroscope and that's why it doesn't need to be any bigger the first thing i'd like to do is see if this engine turns over I'm gonna go with no. If I keep going, I'm gonna break the crank bolt off. Maybe it'll go backwards. Oh, it goes backwards. To that point. Now we'll go this way again. It feels wrong inside. That sounds wrong. Oh, it just blew a piece of uh, insulation out of the so this doesn't have plugs in it. Hey, I think we fixed it. Yeah. Oh, I spoke too soon. The next thing I'd like to do is remove the intake manifold. Haha, <laughs> okay. That wasn't that tight. What are you doing, Impact? I think my battery's, my battery's still sleeping. No, that's actually tight. I'm just gonna crack the rest of these loose. Just five old Moskowitz has been in here, I can tell. Got a couple coolant hoses to remove. Now I would bet that there's going to be a crankcase vent hose underneath this. Did I miss a bolt? Oh, I missed a bolt. They are tight. Oh, there's the hose. Well, uh, I don't know what that is. 
and there's more of it. And there's more of it. Ooh. What is that? No, really, what is it? It's a new one for me. So now with the intake off, you can see there's a little, a little alternate, we can call it uh, inspection port B, right there. And in the exhaust ports, cobwebs, dirt, and dust. No chunks of metal. The next thing I'd like to do is remove the oil filter. Well, some oil came out. All right, let's get this filter off. That was already kind of loose. Looks pretty clean. Let's go take a look at this. All right, let's take a look at this filter. It actually looks really clean. So does the oil that came out. I don't see any metal. It looks good. That is surprising. So I went to move this intake manifold. And I want you guys to listen. Now, I thought this was an air intake manifold, not a water intake manifold. So let's see. Ooh, it stinks. Let's see what comes out of this. I might regret this. You know what? I'm going to regret this. I can already see that I'm going to regret this. Let's get a drain pan. OK, now we can pour this out. Oh, that's disgusting. Well, how could water end up in the intake manifold? Now let's get these variable valve timing solenoids out. I have to take these off to get the valve cover off. And they are very unhappy, apparently. Let's get blue. Seems like a job that blue would be good at. That's a very tight fit. I don't like the way that feels. Well, it might have been good. So typically those should just slide out, but they're pretty dry. Not a lot of oil on them, but there's also no material on them. So that's good. I don't see any bearing material. That's good. Oh, it's clean in here. Really clean. This is one of the cleanest engines that we've seen in a long time. I mean, this is spotless. I don't see anything wrong. This thing looks beautiful. I mean, obviously we know there's something wrong, but this looks great. Next, let's get this crank pulley off. Well, that was easy. Next, we'll get this engine mount bracket. Get this tensioner out of the way. Next, I need to remove what is the crank position sensor, which is blocking a bolt. This is, uh, they do this stuff on purpose, I swear. At least it's easy. Now I've got a bunch of 12 millimeter bolts. Next one. And then a couple more, I mean, four more 14s. All right, now I should be able to pry this off pretty easily. It is rather glued in. Here's the timing cover. The oil pump built in is perfect. It looks fantastic. Just look how clean everything is. Tensioner, rails look nice. It's very simple. 
This looks pretty easy to work on, but I don't know how hard it is in the car. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the tensioner. Uh, okay. Let's just, uh, nope, needs more force than that. Well, that's really, oh, did not expect that. Tensioner looks perfect. Next, we'll get these rails loose. And these things look perfect. I mean, they are absolutely like brand new, like they were just installed yesterday. Okay, this comes off of here, right? Ah. Look at that beautiful chain. It's just, it's absolutely perfect. Now I know I've covered this before, but these engines have a, an interesting design where they have like a cam tower where the cam rides in one piece, which bolts to the cylinder head. So in the event of an oil starvation, it tears up a camshaft, tears up a journal, you can replace just the top half of the head. That's the good news. The bad news is it is another place for it to leak. And I've heard on other Toyota models, it is a source of common oil leaks. Let's crack these cam caps loose. Ooh, that's starting to smell bad. It's foul. All these are loose already. All right, let's zip these out. Well, these journals are perfect. I don't see any discernible damage at all. It all looks really nice. Now, it's important to note that this is a replaceable bearing. And I'm sure there might be there might be something underneath it, or maybe they just wanted it to be a serviceable component. As you would expect, the camshafts are in perfect condition. I'm not quite sure if there's any value here, but they sure do look good. And all the caps look good. I don't see any signs of debris or oil starvation yet. This all looks good. And this one has a replaceable bearing too. Next, we'll remove this cam tower. Let's see if Old Blue can help us out here. Now we can see all the rockers. Everything looks good. Normally if you see bent valves, you'd be able to tell that they're at a different height. And I don't see anything bent. Everything looks good. So at this point, it's time to crack the head bolts loose. Alrighty, what's under the cylinder head? 
Uh-oh. They're not supposed to be like that. Well, the head gasket looks good. It's got nice silver paint on it. Whew. Uh, something's broken. Well, the rust really isn't what I went ooh at. The fact that there's one, two, three pistons in the same position is the ooh. Uh, it's not, it, engines don't work that way. That's at the bottom, at the bottom, at the bottom. And this one is still at the top. So there's clearly been some moisture in here. And now we have to tell, we have to test, we have to do some science and figure out which one's broken. I mean, I have an idea just based on the way it is, but uh, we got to do our test anyway. Here goes something. Cylinder one. Failed. Two. Okay, so uh, we have one disconnecting rod and three connecting rods. Well, the next obvious move is to see if it turns over and see what happens, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? Oh, I, I didn't catch that. What happened there? All right, well, we can go backwards, I think. Uh, uh, we have one stationary. And that's as far as it goes that way. I feel like there might be something in the way. Okay, so we know we got some problems. Now let's go look at that cylinder head. Yeah, there's definitely been some moisture sitting in here, but I don't see anything destroyed. I would certainly recommend a valve job to someone that wanted to reuse this cylinder head, but it's still a salvageable part. Before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to remove the dipstick tube. And the, let's just say that the last Toyota put up a little bit of a fight. So let's see if we can get this one out a little easier. Oh, it turns. Don't make me go get the forklift. I'll do it. Will you just... Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Next, let's remove this water pump. Paper gasket, that's not very Toyota-like. It should, I feel like this should be metal. What do you Toyota techs say, huh? Is this supposed to be paper? I feel like this is a common leaking area on these engines, but the water pump itself looks good. A little bit of corrosion, but it's really a salvageable component. Now let's turn this thing upside down so we can start pulling the oil pan. Uh-oh. It's starting to sound like a cash register. I feel like I should pull the pan in its current position. I think that's a wise idea. Before I make a huge mess, let's just make sure it's drained. Oh, the drain plug's loose. I am sure it's drained. I would call that drained. You can never be, be too sure. The one time I don't do that will be the time that it's full of two quarts of used oil. It's time to zip this pan off. Okay, I think all the bolts are out. Let's see if we can get this off. Well, there's still some oil in there. Oh, chunks. Let's pour the oil out. Oh yeah. I feel like I'm panning for gold, but it's engine parts. Well, what do we have here? I don't know if that's piston or block. Ooh, that looks like part of a rod, maybe. 
I'll be honest with you, I expected more. And there's some goopy stuff in here. Let's just get all the pieces out. There's some sort of gelatinous. Why do I keep touching this? What is this? I don't know what that is, but it's not good. Let's give it a little bath here. I would bet this is all parts of block. I don't know what this this jello-like stuff is. That could be rod, and that could be, these are too heavy to be aluminum. That's rod. The rest of this looks like block to me. All right, now we can turn this thing over, see what kind of damage we're faced with. Uh-oh. That doesn't go there. Oh, no. I see more damage that was very much not apparent right there I hear more loose things that's not supposed to be like that well I don't see anything in the screen which means that this was all one quick disaster but I do see some more damage just start pulling this apart first we'll get this uh, pickup tube out of the way oh yeah there's more damage uh, some some dents. Let's get this out of the way. Oh. Okay. Oh. Well, that took a few hits right there and in that area. And that's uh, it's trying to cut itself in half. Oh. Ooh, that's sharp. I better not do that. Let's get this uh, balance cassette out. Oh, I just dropped the, the block liner. Come on, you can do it. Apparently not. We gotta break those loose the old fashioned way. With a ratchet. Obvious choice. Now hopefully this just Look at those long bolts. There's another piece of shrapnel in here. There's another piece in here which I can't get out for any amount of money. Nope, that's just gonna stay there. So the damage is pretty bad, but it is confined to this cylinder. You can definitely tell there's some stuff facing the wrong direction in there. And some impact marks. But this part looks pretty good. Now this is the balanced cartridge. It's like a cassette here. It has uh, these big weights that spin around, and this keeps the engine from uh, transmitting as much vibration through the engine block, but a lot of the larger four-cylinders use something like this. Now it's time to attempt to remove the lower oil pan. Not even close. I don't know if that's everything, but we're gonna try. Let's see, they may give me a place to pry. Oh yes. Oh, I think I think I got all the bolts out. Whole bunch of corrosion just rained out. And there's the lower pan. Um, Well, that's the problem right there. This was too loose. That's why I blew. No, I'm just kidding. Well, it appears the damage is confined to that one cylinder. It should be pretty easy to get this apart. Let's see if we can kind of push this up in the bore. There we are. Now we can get my hammer stuck in the crank. And that turns all the way around. We're on the road to recovery. Eh, it'll probably be easier to get it apart like this. Our oil pan definitely has seen better days. It's trying to saw itself in half. First thing I'd like to do is get all the rod caps removed. Those are pretty tight.
Let's see if we can fish this rod out of here. Let's get some pliers. Hey, where's the rest of it? Let's see if we can knock these rods and pistons out real quick. Shouldn't be too hard. Whoa, whoa. One is really feels really solid. Must be some rust hanging it up. Let's go to the next. Well, I'm gonna have to hammer the hammer. Hopefully, I just don't launch this across the shop. But you never know. The bearing came out. We're we'll making some headway, I think. It's getting there. I think I can do it with just this now. All that's left is to pull the main caps and remove the crank. And this should just pluck right out of here. Well, the main bearings all look pretty good. There's a little bit of wear on the outside edge of these, but I don't think that would have caused any issue or, you know, I don't think they're gonna fail soon. I did look at these, and I can't tell if there's a date code on these or not. It says 162A, and then they have a number on them, three, and that's Toyota's designation for their size. I don't see a date code on any of these. They look like Toyota bearings to me. So I don't know if this is a Toyota reman engine, or maybe a salvage yard sold a low mile used engine and painted it to make it look better. I, I just don't understand why it was painted silver. It doesn't look better. The block has several impact marks. You can see right here. It took a big, deep bite out of that. There's a hole there. Smashed the piston squirter. But it can find the damage to this cylinder. The rest of this all looks really good. Of course, cylinders all set with water in them. So even with a broken block like this, I don't think it's, there's no value here. It's just scrap. The rod bearings also look pretty much perfect very little wear if any nothing measurable these are number two bearings and same thing no date code on these unless that is a date code 162 is that what it says 162a 0g16a so you guys tell me is that a is that a date code but then you get to um well there's the big problem So the, the, the thing that's the most um, telling about this, besides the fact that the rod's bent like a pretzel, is that there are marks on the bottom of the piston. And I bet that when we go over to the crankshaft, yes, similar marks there. I believe this is a hydrolock event. Of course, you guys are probably screaming that at the top of your lungs the entire time. But I think this engine fared pretty well, all things considered. I don't think this was a super high RPM failure. I think this was probably just normal driving, although Andy did say that uh, the driver of this car tended to like the sound of the rev limiter. But I don't think this was an over rev si situation. Uh, we didn't see any valve damage, and, and there's no signs that pistons hit valves in this engine. And that would definitely be something that we would see if this thing was, was over revved, especially with the fact that we found water in the intake and it was stored inside of a shop. I don't see any, any bends in any of these rods. These all look pretty straight. Pistons all look pretty good, but I don't know how, if there's really any value here, which is fine. I, I didn't pay anything for this. I don't expect to sell anything out of this. 
but I do like the salvage good parts. And the crankshaft, it looks pretty good. It's hard to tell if it's been worked on. I, I, I don't believe this to be a, a remanned engine. I think this was a used engine that some salvage yard probably painted silver. I don't really understand the, the idea behind that other than making it look better than it is. But there's definitely some impact marks there, but all the journals look good. So you tell me, would, would you reuse this crank? Is this a sellable component? Is that damage superficial? Running with scissors, flying a kite in a lightning storm, playing with fire, buying a late model BMW. These are all things that we are taught not to do at a very young age. And I don't want to be that guy to tell you what to do or what not to do. I don't like to get preachy, except for making sure you check and change your oil regularly. But I'd like to add one kind of common sense thing to that list, and that is to not drive through standing water. There's no good outcomes possible from driving through standing water, unless of course you have a late model BMW and you'd like to make an insurance claim. You know what? I didn't say that or think that. So don't do that, but don't drive through standing water either. That's a terrible idea. We've torn down several hydrolocked engines on this channel. The engines blow every single time, every single time. Nothing good comes of it. We all owe Andy and his son a huge thank you for bringing this engine by and providing it to us so that we could glare at its catastrophe and someone's expensive repair bill. And this is a really simple engine. This is the first 2AR I've torn down. Quite like it. It's very easy to work on. Everything seems really accessible. And again, I've never had a single person ask me for one, which tells me they must be pretty good. Although it doesn't matter if it's gasoline, electric, diesel, who made it, there is someone out there that can break anything. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you'd like to buy any of the parts off of this engine or anything else I've torn down, you can go to importapart.com or email us at importapartsales at gmail.com. We also have a part request form on our website, which sends us an email of exactly what it is you're looking for. Again, you guys all owe Andy and his son a huge thank you. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.